Hello, my name is Joelle Driver, and this is just my personal opinion about the teacher who was in 15 days of prison in um, Khartoum, Sudan. She's at home now, thank God. But um, people were sending her death threats and um, 40 lashes. They wanted to give her 40 lashes. Um, how primitive does that sound? Um, you know, I'm, I'm just sorry. But Sudan is a Muslim country. And I'm sorry to say, but we don't hear news reports like this from Ethiopia. They're in Africa, but we don't hear about it. And they're strictly not a Muslim country if you do your research. Um, they've actually had a Christian church for almost 2,000 years, which is quite amazing. And I personally would never be offended if um, somebody named Jesus Christ on their teddy bear in a classroom. I think that would be rather adorable. And I don't think Muhammad would be offended either. And that's where this all stand out. This had nothing to do with that maybe 50% of the class had a family member that was named Muhammad. This had to do with parents being offended that Muhammad was used and it was a religious hate thing. And it's ridiculous. I think Muhammad be tickled pink to be remembered through a teddy bear. I mean, he was a prophet, right? And that's awesome. You know, we all know every religion has gone through this process of prosecution of people through the religion. The Christians have the crusades. China has a foot binding. It might not have been religious, but it was torturous to women. Buddhists, I haven't heard anything they did wrong. I mean, they're innocent. The only one I can think of. Um, the Salem witchcraft child. That's an American one. Yeah, that's one of them. I mean, there's, look at the Puritans. They used to nail down their children's tongues on the tables. It's horrible. Joan of Arc, she was burned at the stake, and she used to hear supposedly God's voice. I believe she did. So on and so on. I, can't, I can go on for hours about this. But, but it seems that Muslim countries don't seem to understand the progress of the rest of the planet. The Internet exists. It does. And not only for porn, but learning and understanding that religious extremism causes pain. It does. I, I can't believe they haven't figured out, hey, hmm, extremism, hmm, wait a minute, it doesn't really help, it actually hurts our cause. So maybe they should back off. And, you know, one particular book I've read, it's really excellent, it's called Princess, it's by Jean P. Sasson. It's not actually written by the girl, the princess, because um, she could be killed. So she couldn't write the book. But it's about a Saudi Arabian prison, princess prison. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about those. Anyway, um, princess, it's her life and her home. You know, here's some examples that really affected me. Her mother was buried in a desert with no grace. Just in the middle of the desert. Nothing. Nothing to recognize for her accomplishments. Nothing. Um, one of her sisters was anal raped by her husband, and she needed to have a machine to help her go to the restroom. Nobody said anything, you know. It's like, oh, it's his right. It's like, that's great. One of her childhood friends was locked in her room until she died. And um, another was drowned. This was done by family members. And there was no prosecution. That was the law. You can do whatever you want to your girl. The boy is pretty much innocent. Another, this was pointed out, was female genital mutilation. If you don't want to lie to this, Horrible. It's called FGM. Look it up on the internet. You'll get wonderful pictures. Um, it's a torture. Y you think male circumcision is bad? Um, the most extreme case, there's three different ways to do it. But the most extreme is when they remove the clitoris, they sew up the vulva, and leave a little hole for urination and their period. And most women die of infections, they die of shock, and this is done from six-year-olds all the way to 17, 18. How traumatizing to be a six-year-old to meet cut, most likely with a rusted nail or a piece of glass, to save face for your family. That's what it was used for, to save face, to save their virginity until they're married. I had a, one guy in my class from Sudan, just to add to my wonder, um, he said, yes, it is to save the father's face. I'm like, so it's not even for the girl. It's for the father's face. I was sick that day, so I couldn't really argue with him. 
He says that you have to respect our culture. I'm like, no, not when you hurt other people. I don't have to respect other people that hurt other people. I don't have to respect that at all. And I asked him, would you do this to your daughter? And he said, it's, I, I can't do it here. It's illegal. Scary thing, it's, Ill it's mm, illegal in America, but there's some places that will still do it. Some states say it's okay, and that scares the heck out of me. You know, and, you know, I'm, I'm really saddened by this. You know, it's horrible. And this is what I want to do. I want to send 100,000 teddy bears to that little part of Sudan. Just throw them off a plane, you know, in a little parachute. And I want them, I want to get a specially designed burqa for some of them. Or get a t-shirt that says, my name's Muhammad in bold gold letters. In their language, I don't care. I, they'll figure it out and probably burn them. But what would the parents do? They probably would burn the teddy bears. That's what I think. And that would be horrible and I'd get on the news. Par parents would be bewildered. Would they send the children to the jail? Or would they just send us Americans some teddy bears with Jesus Christ on them? I think oh, that's cute. I think that's really cute. I would love that. So, all you Muslims out there, um, I hope you send me a teddy bear with Jesus Christ on it. 